and welcome to today's video. I am super excited to talk to you about my buddy Matt's 1964 Sears Allstate. This bike was supposed to be on the channel a while ago, but something happened. The bike with all its original paint has been in the Garage Brew Show in Cincinnati and has won the first annual uh, That Scooter Thing scavenger hunt, which happened on April 20th this year. However, shortly after the event, after he left, I got a text and a video message that were really unsettling. So eventually the bike ended up in my garage and surely enough the flywheel was completely loose. This is the new flywheel puller. So as it turned out the flywheel broke the crankshaft taper. We're blaming two things on that which is A short, too short gearing and B old and out around flywheel. So I took the engine completely apart and it's time to do a full and remodernized rebuild of this uh, engine which is a Sprint Veloce engine. So we're going to start off by changing all the bearings and we will also look at the gearing. Uh, something happened in there before so I, I think there was a different gearbox. But first we will start with some Dremel action. I will rework carburetor, carburetor box and intake for this. So the bike was going to stay rotary and the rotary pad was fine so I, I cleaned up the intake. I made it a little bit larger but not longer and I matched everything to each other which meant I matched intake to carb box, carb box to carburetor and then venturi to carburetor. Like everything from the top down was matched without as little imperfection as possible. This is one of the first times where I really put work into this and I'm quite I'm quite happy with the result. Usually I'm a reed valve guy, but this really got me sucked into rotary intakes and I, uh, I'm quite happy the way it turned out. At this point I cleaned up the engine to get all the aluminum shavings out and I already put a bearing in for the drive shaft. So next up would be our crankshaft bearing and on the other side would be our gearbox. But... Before we get into the gearbox, I want to talk to you about the tail of the three input shafts. So as it turns out, Vespas came from the 1960s to the modern PX engine and LML engine. Came with three different input shafts that sit with the Christmas tree. They are all the same length, but they differ in terms of diameter for the engine bushing and the bearing in the primary drive. Here's the example of a 1960s bushing fitting into any engine up to the P200, I think, as the diameter there is smaller. The bearing that sits in the primary drive is smaller in the earlier models, and in the late models it uses a bigger bearing, as the diameter for the bearing is larger. We are going to use a LML primary drive and the problem is that the old bearing is simply too small. This will not work. So the goal is to use the bigger bearing as it fits into the primary. But we cannot use the modern shaft as the bottom is too large to fit into the bushing in the engine cases. So at this point we are in a stupid impasse, right? We gotta find a input shaft that has the diameter for the bearing on top that's large and the bushing diameter on the bottom that's smaller. Enter the transitional input shaft that came with, I wanna say late 1970s to early 1980s Vespas, like Rallys have it, Supers have it, Sprints have it. It has the big diameter for the bearing on top 
and a small diameter for the bushing on the bottom. And this thing will solve all our problems. But it's kind of hard to find. So finally, after this little setback, we solved our issue with the primary shaft and we were getting ready to install the Christmas tree. We are using a 6523 primary transmission, which is the same then on a P200, which will help us get a little bit more stretch with the 8-inch wheels and not have the engine rev super high at 50-55 miles an hour. The gearing itself is also from a P200, well, same gearing than a P200, this is uh, LML gearbox, but we used a short fourth in it. I then put the crankshaft in and got ready to close the engine and I did not forget to kickstart again this time. However, when using a LML gearbox, we cannot use the original shifter box that came on a Veloci engine. So I also use an LML shifter box in order to make everything work together uh, harmoniously. As for the clutch, we decided to use a very light springed banded Cosa clutch. I think this is an FA Italia one. And it came with 23 teeth for our primary gearing. We reused the cylinder that was mounted on it. It's a DR177 but re reworked it to get some higher exhaust port timings. Now converting a Veloce engine to 8 inch is not that hard. All you gotta do is just mount an 8 inch hub, which as you can see here is one of those stainless steel hubs that come on most VBBs, VNBs, and all states and so on. Next step was to mount a carburetor, which is pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. Now as for the intake, we are not using a air filter, but we're using a Polini Venturi, which is tightened down one bolt that you really want to lock tight because you don't want that thing to fall in. And with the air filter holder from Polini, I used a mesh filter, which really looked well with the uh, engine and the overall look of the bike. As it comes to the ignition, I already have a video up. This is the uh, Scooter Mercado sponsored video on a BGM ignition. Uh, I put the link in the description, you can check it out. It has full instructions on how to install this kit. And this is the engine that we did it with. Once it was wired up and inside the frame, it was time to fire it up. Before getting into the firing up, I want to give a big shout out to Peter from Piston Ported who sent us one of his boomsticks. This this thing was used and it was broken, so we welded it back together, gave it a new coat of paint, and it looked pretty good. And just like the Sears Allstate, the boomstick is part of the US scooter culture and it was nice to bring the two together. This bike with its all original paint, now with a quick engine, is nothing but exciting. Hitting a little bit over the speed limit on 8 inch wheels is scary and an adventure by itself. A 
it is a blast to ride. I hope you had fun with this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.